beginning to advanced JSON. Here we'll be using Visual Studio 2012, ASP.NET MVC4, and jQuery 1.7 or greater. The goal of advanced JSON is to show you how you can use AJAX, JSON, structured data, and MVC to get data on the fly without having to do full page postbacks. So let's go into Visual Studio and see how this is done. Now back in Visual Studio, let's go ahead and start a new project. Go up to File, New, Project, and select ASP.NET MVC4, and choose where you want to put it. Here we'll just call it um, Advanced JSON. And go ahead and hit OK. And we'll just let it default to the internet application. The view engine we're going to use is Razor. You can use ASPX. It doesn't really matter since JSON is independent JavaScript of the .NET. So Razor, go ahead and say OK. Let it create the project for you. So it's adding all the dependencies and all the files that come along with the MVC4 project. Okay, it's adding, it's almost done. There are quite a bit of files that it does add for MVC4. So the idea here is that once it's done, we're going to create a model class and then we're going to add to a controller and then we're going to add some of our JSON uh, get functions to a view. Okay? The first thing that it does is it opens up the home controller, which is filled in for you with some basic stuff for your index page, about, and contact. If you go ahead and hit Control F5 and run the site, you can see what it does and what it builds for you out of the box. So this is your standard MVC4 site that is given to you um, when you use the internet application part of the MVC4 template. So go back into your Visual Studio project and first thing that we're going to do is add a, a model class for us. So expand models and you see the account model is already there. Right click on models and um, select add and choose new class and we'll go give the class a name of product model click add okay um, I'm just gonna take out model after product model so it's actually product or public class product so let's go ahead and define some of the member variables of our public class product so public int product ID and do a get set and public string name do a get set here as well and then lastly we'll do a public double we'll say cost okay so that defines our class for our product next what we want to do is go into our index.html view so go ahead and close models and we'll go into views home and double click on index.chhtml if you're using the razor view engine and we're just going to remove all the stuff that's in our way so remove everything except for the view bag title at top and the first thing that we're going to do is assign a model to the page so we're going to say at model then the name of your application so here it's advanced json dot models dot product so we're just telling our page um, what model that we're using for or with it uh, then we'll go define a field set and the legend is going to be find product and then we're just going to put in some of our variables so at HTML dot label actually label four and here we got m dot product ID and at HTML dot 
text box for again we're gonna do m m dot product ID found at that time and then we're going to put a button in here so button type equals button and ID of it we're just gonna call it find and then for the name or the text of the button we're just gonna say find product and now we're gonna put in some more members of our class so we go do a label for m m dot name and then again we're gonna do HTML dot text box for m m dot name and then we're gonna do the last label it's gonna be label for m m dot cost so we're gonna show the cost here HTML text box for m m dot cost okay and that should wrap up our field set now what we're going to do is define our JavaScript so we're going to say at section section scripts with the capital S this will make sure that our JavaScript gets rendered after um, jQuery libraries and all their libraries get rendered out into the page so they'll be available if you don't do this you will get uh, uh, a dollar sign is undefined uh, meaning for jQuery uh, so within here we're going to define our function that's going to contain our Ajax call uh, to go get the JSON against the home controller within MVC and we're also going to define our what our button does uh, up top our button with the idea of find so first let's type our get product function so this is what the function that will do a lookup or call the lookup rather to fill in our fields so we're going to say var product equals open close curly brace and product dot product ID equals uh, dollar sign to a quote pound product ID then val so I'll get the value of that uh, next we're going to do a dollar sign dot get JSON all up case call and this is going to be to a controller method that we're going to make I'm going to call it get product and then we're going to do comma we're going to pass in the product model so we can pass in the ID or the product ID rather of that and then we're going to do a product update or update product uh, JavaScript call that we're going to define uh, below okay so next we're going to uh, create our update product function you'll we'll pass in the data of that because that's going to be a data we're going to get back from our JSON call. So now we're going to say dollar sign to quote hash symbol of name of our product dot val, and we're going to pass in the data dot name of that to match up with our product class. Now we're going to do pound cost dot val data dot cost make sure your punctuation is correct okay so that takes care of what goes and gets the product now we need to wire up our button so we're going to say find dot click function and within this we're simply just saying get product okay that handles all of our HTML and JavaScript Lastly, we just need to go to our home controller and type in our new our new method. So find some space after like the last action re result. We're going to type in public JSON result get product to match up with what we're trying to call. And we're going to call the product class there. 
and if it gives you the squiggly lines if you're in Visual Studio, uh, right click on it and go to Resolve using Models. So then it knows what you want. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is create a couple fake products here. So we're going to create a new list of our products. And now we're going to do products.add and there's a new product And we're going to say product ID equals one, name equals Coke, cost equals zero dot five zero, ends quickly. Okay, so there's one. We'll just copy that a few times. So just change our ID, so otherwise we will get issues. Uh, okay, so let's see Coke, Pepsi. Mountain Dew is another one, and in last place, we'll just say 7-Up, let's just change some of these values here, and make that 60, okay, so we have all new values there, okay, so we've got that loaded, next we need to do a lookup for our product, so we're saying for our products, dot single or default Oops. and I'm going to say where the item product ID is equal to p dot product ID that we're passing in right there so let's go ahead and close that line and the last thing we need to do is do a return encapsulate with JSON our product now one thing that we do need to do is we need to tell .NET in NVC that we need the JSON re request behavior to be uh, allowed to do a get. So you to, after you pass your model, which in this case is product, uh, put comma and then JSON request behavior right here, dot allow get. This is kind of a security feature because if you don't do this, it's going to fail and it will give you the message saying you need to add this JSON request behavior allow get anyways. Okay. So go ahead and hit save and let's go ahead and uh, control F5 if you want to do it without debugging and we'll see what we get. Okay, so there's our text fields, here's our button. Um, let's just put in product ID of one and hit find product. And there we have Coke for 50 cents. We put in three, get Mountain Dew, get two, that's Pepsi. And of course, if we do four, we have seven up. So what's going on behind the scenes? Let's go ahead and open up Firebug. If you are using Firefox uh, or Chrome or others that support Firebug or something like that. And let's go ahead and refresh the page so we can see what's going on behind the scenes. So if, when I hit find product, it shows that I'm doing a git against the get product method within the home controller. So let's expand this. And here you see our response is coming across as JSON uh, from what you learned earlier. Here's our double quotes that surround our member name. There's the double quote uh, that separates the name and the value, comma, because we have multiple values being across or pulled across uh, for per row. If you want to see the JSON that is actually posted, here's the nice neat version, which is product ID, the name, and then the cost there. So as you can see, it's really, really handy and really simple to look into JSON, whether it's being posted or being brought back um, within MVC uh, and other languages like Java works like this and, um, you know, in other compiler languages. So this has been an example of using JSON to do some advanced stuff in MVC4.